In this video, I'm going to be talking about reciprocity and game theory. And I have a whole nother video on reciprocity and economics. You should watch that if you want to fully understand this. But the basic idea is that reciprocity is a feeling that is a natural instinct in people. To have positive utility if you're nice to people who are nice to you, and also positive utility from being mean to people who are mean to you. And this can definitely help us predict why we have certain outcomes with the prisoner's dilemma that might actually be able to sustain a cooperative equilibrium. Because a lot of times people will hear about the prisoner's dilemma for the first time and they'll think actually it doesn't really capture a lot of real world scenarios. So I think if we learn to build reciprocity into our models and phenomenon like reciprocity, this is just one among many sort of instinctive human reaction, natural types of uh, ways people respond to situations, if, if we build those into the way we think about payoffs, we can actually have more predictive uh, game theory models. So. Let's think about the scenario first. And I'm going to use the classic prisoner's dilemma scenario, which is you have two um, criminals who have been working together and the police have enough evidence to convict them of a minor crime. But the police are pretty sure that they committed a bigger crime and are trying to get the two um, potential felons to, to sort of turn their partner in. So the scenario is, um, if both of them stay quiet, if they cooperate, and of course, prisoner's dilemma, we have cooperation and defecting. If they cooperate, they stay silent and they get two years in prison for the minor thing that the police have the evidence to convict them of. But they separate the two friends into different interrogation rooms and they give them both the same deal, which is if you tell on your partner and... Uh, tell what happened in this bigger crime, then we will let you off scot-free and your partner will have a heavier sentence. However, if both of them tell on their partner, then they both get a heavier sentence, but not quite as heavy as if one just uh, told on their partner and the other stayed quiet. So the payoffs here lead to a situation where both players have a dominant strategy of defecting, of telling on their partner. Because um, if your partner stayed quiet, you will wish you had defected and not gotten any time in jail. If your partner defects, you'll look at the two payoffs and you'll wish you had defected so that you don't end up the person screwed over. That That's how prisoner's dilemmas work. So the Nash equilibrium here with just these payoffs is for both players to defect and they both get the five years in prison, but they both looked at the situation if they had both cooperated and stayed silent and they say this, is, this would have been a much better situation. Now, people hear that and they say, wait a second, this is why you have pride in not snitching on your friends. You have pride and loyalty. And you also have feelings of reciprocity. But of course, if we apply reciprocity, we recognize actually these two boxes are horrible boxes. They're boxes where one friend defected and the other cooperated. So one friend is benefiting by hurting their other friend. It's a horrible box and it violates a sense of reciprocity. And the basic idea here with game theory and reciprocity is going to be that actually the payoffs listed in this table are years in jail. And oftentimes the payoffs in these game theory tables we come up with are money received or other things, but that's the wrong payoff. The right payoff would actually be the utility experienced if we end up in a certain box. So it could be that if this is the years in jail, both of these players feel really bad about the situation. The person who defected and told on their friend while their friend stayed loyal, that person is going to have a lot of guilt. They're going to feel bad. Their sense of reciprocity is going to be violated and it's on them. And of course, the friend who was betrayed is going to feel really bad. Being betrayed feels horrible. So the, the negative utility in these two boxes is actually going to be probably bigger than the pure numbers up here. And that's because it's not just about the jail time, it's about the relationship between the two people and how they both feel about the outcome in this box. 
And also, we might think these two boxes, we might actually have positive reciprocity utility because, of course, if you both cooperate, you have this great feeling that you're loyal friends, and that has value, even um, value that's maybe not exactly as comparable as time in jail, but, but it's real to people. It's real to a lot of people in different situations. And same here, like in this box, both players can look at the other and say, you betrayed me, I don't feel as bad about betraying you. The, the reciprocity in this box is actually potentially positive. So we want to be able to account for that. And this is basically what a lot of behavioral economics does. It rewrites the payoffs according to more human reactions to the whole scenario. So let me just rewrite some payoffs that might actually account for the situation I just described. So these payoffs reflect what I just described about these two boxes being horrible and these two boxes being not so bad because of the reciprocity. And in this scenario, we actually have two Nash equilibriums, one of which is better than the other. Now, we need to acknowledge, and this is actually something that's really true when you start to build behavioral things into people's utility, that each person's personality may have a different propensity toward reciprocity. So for some people, they may feel really bad, really guilty if they defect and the other cooperates, and other people may have defense mechanisms to feel less guilty about that. And so people's importance weight that they place on things like reciprocity and honor and loyalty and all that stuff, those importance weights matter. And being able to understand your friend's importance weights, knowing them for long enough that you can predict what they will do in game theory situations, that's actually really valuable. And in a lot of ways, when we think about institutions and we think about communities of people, one of the value of knowing someone for a really long time is you have a really good mental model of their utility, their importance weights on behavioral factors. So when you encounter game theory situations like you naturally do in long-lasting relationships, it's much easier for you to predict and therefore much easier for you to strategically navigate those relationships. Um, I think that's all I'm going to say about this for now. This is a lot of fun. You can build a lot of different types of utility in, in this way. And I think it's always really important if you have a game theory table where the payoffs are in dollars or in people hired or in um, something that's like an external factor where people may have feelings about which situation they end up in relative to the other person then you might want to actually rewrite that table and redo the utilities based on the way people feel about the situation, including sort of the equality or inequality relative to the other player. That's always a useful strategy when you're analyzing game theory.